I'm sorry this is going off the screen. Uh, the Daily Mail still has no idea how to actually format their website. Uh, trans woman is cleared of flashing her penis uh, at three women uh, using Ohio YMCA after a judge ruled that she's too fat for her genitals to be visible. <laughs> Darren Glines, who now goes by Rachel, was found not guilty of three counts of indecent exposure. The 31-year-old lawyers claimed that her gut was too large for her penis to be exposed. <laughs> her penis. Uh, one of the complaints stated that there were three juveniles present during the incident in Xenia, Ohio. A judge ruled that a transgender woman could not have indecently exposed her penis in a YMCA female changing room after agreeing with her claim that she's too fat for it to be visible. Darren Glines, who now goes by Rachel, was found not guilty of three counts of indecent exposure at the facility in Xenia, Ohio. Judge David McNamee cleared the Glines after agreeing that the size of her belly meant that it would have been impossible for anyone to see her penis. My belly isn't that big. I've got a little bit. I've got a little bit of the Alex Jones body on the go just now. But even though I don't have an overhang or anything like that, you still can't see my penis. Uh, Glines, thirty-one has had several p complaints made against her dating back to 2021, with at least three people complaining that they saw a naked male in the female locker room. One of the complaints stated that there were three juveniles present during the incident, with a woman going to the front desk to report the issue. But she was reassured by a worker that it was actually a woman that, and that she shouldn't have been disturbed uh, by the incident. Yeah, that's right. Uh, when... When uh, you see a penis in the locker room, just go, you shouldn't be disturbed by that woman. Allow me to dictate to you what you're allowed to be bothered by. <laughs> like, fucking hell. Uh, yeah, it's fetishism. Uh, Judge David McNamee says that there was little dispute as to the facts of the case, as Glines was authorised by the executive director of the YMCA to use the women's locker room. Jacqueline Brockman said that Glines was allowed to use the facilities at all of the Greater Dayton area YMCA locations. The case was legally brought against Darren Glines, but she now goes by the first name of Rachel and has not had gender reassignment surgery. McNamee says uh, there is no question that Glines was in the women's locker room. However, Glines was not charged with trespass, nor was Glines charged with being in an area of the YMCA where Glines was not supposed to be. Quite simply, the facts do not exist to support a find of guilt as char uh, guilt as charges. Uh, Glines' genitalia was not visible as a result of other portions of her body covering same. I think this this was written very very fast at like four in the morning or something like that. Man, this is plagued with grammatical errors. Uh, Glines' lawyer uh, Lauren and Kira Deaver uh, both argued that she was too fat that her gut would, would obscure her genitalia. In a statement released on Monday, Glyne's attorney says it's unfortunate not only for her, but for the entire community that the filing of these charges ever occurred. I know, oh, these women didn't want, uh, <laughs> didn't want this person getting changed in front of little girls. How dare they? How unfortunate. Oh, you know, see... See, when you don't allow men to get changed in front of little girls, it just really brings a community down, doesn't it? Uh, we are grateful that the rule of law and the truth prevailed so that Miss Glines and the community can move on in peace. Uh, Xenia City Council President Williams Urshel says that one of the women who filed the complaint was allegedly informed by an employee at the YMCA that Glines identifies as a woman so she shouldn't be disturbed by this. Uh, Urshel uh, recounted the story at a Green County Tea Party meeting with attendees audibly laughing. The rest of the City Council released a statement saying that Urshel's comments were his own and that the charges filed against Glines were through the Xenia Police Division's own investigation. Neither the Xenia City Council nor any members of the council had any part in the decision to file public indecency charges regarding the use of the YMCA's locker rooms. The YMCA of Greater Dayton said in a statement that they would continue to comply with the law while also ensuring the privacy and safety of all members. Under no circumstances will we investigate an individual's birth identity and then assign individuals to locker rooms, the YMCA said. That would be counter to the law, counter to respect for all people and it is not who or what we are as an organisation you know respect is earned right it's not something you just automatically grant people there are people out there who I absolutely hate but they have my respect because they earned it uh, still hate them though uh, a YMCA employee was called to testify at the trial telling the court that she had to get a restraining order against Glines after she assaulted her 
uh, uh, Katisha Young told Redux that Glynes grabbed her genitals after they had gone out to coffee. Young claims... So hold on, why wasn't there charges brought? There should have been full charges brought for that. Young claims that following the assault, Grains started attending her place of work, knowing when she would be working. She added that she is concerned that she will be forced to find other work once her protection order against Glynes runs out in 2024. Again, all your trans, do what you want, do whatever you want all the time. Uh, the incident at the YMCA in Xena is just one of many that have hit the group's facilities across the US. Julie Jammin, 80, was banned from a YMCA pool after she demanded a transgender employee leave the women's locker room. She had been a regular at the Mountain View Pool in the city of Port Townsend in Washington when she spotted the worker in the changing room while she was showering. Jaman claims that while she was changing, she heard a man's voice and immediately confronted the worker, Clementine Adams, who identifies as a woman. She said that she asked Adams if she had a penis, and she says it was none of her business, so she asked them to leave. Jaman told a member of staff at the school it was... Uh, blah, Jaman told a member of staff at the pool was told by YMCA aquatics manager Rowan DeLuna that she was discriminating and that the police would be called. She was told that she was banned from the pool forever before DeLuna called law enforcement where Jaman was described as having an emotional response and screaming in an incident report. So basically, you are not allowed to be upset about this. If you're a woman, you're not allowed to be upset about this at all. Now, if there's one place that you definitely uh, don't want a gentleman to be, it's in the women's changing rooms uh, of any of these types of places, right? Women are going in there, they're getting naked, they're showering, they're getting ready and stuff like that. Now, yeah, everyone turns around and oh, but they're women, but trans women are women, blah, blah, blah. Okay, not everybody sees it that way and there's nothing you can do about that. That woman sees that person as a man, right? There's nothing that you can do about that. That, that is just that person's perception. You can't then, on the spot, go, oh, no, it's totally cool for this person to be looking at you while you're getting ready. And if you don't like that, you're a bigot. In fact, we're going to call the cops. We're going to call the cops because you won't get naked in front of this person. Hmm, how do you like that? What an accepting, wonderful, and tolerable society. One thing that I will say... My, my lawyer's going to be upset about this. If I, I have, I have plans, you know, I'm, I've got two two daughters. We're going to be going out to places like, for example, we might go to the swimming pool. If anyone like that starts getting changed in front of my daughters and they come out and say, there's a person in there with a penis and they're getting changed in front of us, uh, I'm, I'm going to be in the papers again. Right? I, I'm at a point where I, I don't care. I don't care anymore. Right, if anybody wants to try and pull that shit and they're going to say, oh yeah, it's totally okay for this person to be in the changing room getting changed next to your daughters waving their fucking dick about and stuff like that, I'm, I'm going to be in the papers again. Right? Because it's at a point now where if you're not going to do anything about it, then obviously the onus then falls on to me to keep my children safe. If you're not going to do anything about it, then I will. And a lot of other people are starting to feel the same way. So if you want to make a third changing room and go, oh, this is the unisex transgender changing room or whatever, whatever then, fine. Not a problem. Not a problem whatsoever. That's fine. They've got their own little space. But forcing women to be alongside them and then threatening to call the cops on them because they don't like that, yeah, you are, you're just asking for trouble now. 